Hello everyone, this is a physics 30 unit 2 lesson 1 example question. Um, this kicks things off with uh, electric uh, induction or charging by induction. And we are looking at the scenario from class probably. Um, if not, you, you'll have to just watch some videos on this. But there's some bubbles, standard bubbles floating towards a Van de Graaff generator. In this case, we're saying that the generator is negatively charged. So there's this uh, big metal conductive sphere that's got a net negative charge. And the bubbles are going to float towards this charge. Question is, why do the neutral bubbles, because we're assuming these are neutral, why do they move towards the negative net charge? Well, to visualize that, we have to think about induction. Um, we'll imagine that this is a sort of close-up of the edge of the Van de Graaff dome, and I'm just going to represent it with all these negative charges there. Of course, there'd be positives too, but I'm just representing a negative net charge on the Van de Graaff dome. Now we have these bubbles coming in, and initially they're neutral, which means they are made up with positives and negatives evenly distributed. I'm going to represent this bubble as having four positives, which means it needs to have four negatives. Now, negatives are easy to move. Uh, we, we model the movement of charge normally with the negative charge moving because it's the electron. Uh, it is possible to talk about positives moving, but uh, we'll normally just talk about these negatives. So if the negatives are able to move, um, even without creating a spark or jumping across a gap, they can move within the bubble or within the surface of the bubble, and they're going to be affected by this negative charge. Of course, negatives repel negatives. So the negative charges in the, in the bubble, they're going to want to be on this side of the bubble. So I'm going to represent them moving over towards this side, trying to get as far away from the Van de Graaff surface as possible. And that means if I was to put a little ring around this part of the bubble, this part of the bubble has a net neg uh, positive charge. It's got a positive region. It's got a positive region. And that is what's going to create the attraction initially. This positive region is going to f experience a force towards the Van de Graaff. Of course, the Van de Graaff is going to feel an equal and opposite force, except the Van de Graaff has a significantly greater mass, and therefore it's the bubble that's going to move. So that explains why the bubbles move towards the generator initially. What happens when these bubbles hit the generator? Well, um, the generator, we're going to sort of assume, we're going to say that it's just left on, it's basically an unlimited supply of negative. So when the when the bubble hits the generator, now it's able. There's a, a movement possible. This the the surface of the Van der Graaff is a conductor, so it's quite easy for these electrons to move around the surface of the of the Van der Graaff, and they're going to move, or at least they have the possibility of moving into the bubble, and that's what's going to happen because. The positives inside the bubble, we're going to model those as not moving. I'm going to represent them as four. And we'd previously drawn the negatives, the four negatives, to be as far away from the Van de Graaff as possible. Well, now we've got this positive area here. And some of the, some of the, the, the electrons from the Van de Graaff can actually move into the bubble. They will take this region here, because this region, remember, was positively charged. So we're essentially filling up the bubble with more charge than it initially had, which means the bubble now has a net negative charge. It's got a net negative. It's not just the region, it's the whole bubble that's now negative. Now, this means that, of course, we have a, we have a negative charge on the bubble, and we have a negative charge on the Van de Graaff. And now, if this bubble was to stay intact, which it's highly unlikely because bubbles tend to pop, but if it was going to stay intact, and you've probably seen this with other objects coming near to and touching a Van de Graaff, now it's going to feel a repulsion. It's going to move away. So this explains why we see bubbles moving towards the generator and then away from the generator. The only bit that's missing here 
is that the pop, the burst, will essentially spray these, uh, will spray this negative charge onto other bubbles around them. So if we were to continue this setup, let's say we've still got our infinite negative charge from our Van der Graaff here, this bubble has now popped, but if there might be a couple more bubbles nearby that were initially attracted, remember they're going to be having the same experience as the first one, so they're going to have these negatives pushed over to the far side, that's called induced, it's going to have an induced charge, the presence of the of the electric field has induced a charge on these bubbles but now the bubble that was here has burst and it's popped and little bits of bubble are going to fly in all directions and those little bits of bubble we'll draw them like this they will have little charges in them and so what can happen is these negative charges can go into the other bubbles filling up or at least adding to the other other bubbles which gives these other bubbles a net negative charge and so now these bubbles even though they were moving towards the van der Graaff now they're going to experience a force of repulsion away from the van der Graaff so that's why we see these bubbles coming in and then going away Okay, so for the second example, we've got an electroscope, uh, which you'll recall from class. We'll be using these quite a bit. Um, it's basically a charged sphere with conducting legs and then these very light leaves at the bottom that, can, that will be affected by electric charge, by electric forces very easily. So if they happen to be equally charged, they'll push away from each other. And if they're neutrally charged, they will just relax down and fall vertically. Um, in this example, we have an ebonite rod. So we're rubbing an ebonite rod with fur, which gives the ebonite a negative charge. Well, ebonite, we're going to need to reference our triboelectric series here. Ebonite is basically rubber. So we can see from our triboelectric series, materials that tend to gain a negative charge are down this side, and materials that gain a positive charge are up this side. So if we consider ebonite to be rubber and fur to be hair, well, ebonite or rubber is going to be reasonably negative. It's going to, it's going to um, be given a negative charge quite easily, whereas hair will, will give a positive charge. In other words, hair will be giving the electrons to the ebonite. So... The ebonite comes into contact, it touches, touches the scope, which means the net negative charge on the ebonite rod has now been conducted into the electroscope. And that's meant that the leaves, these legs at the bottom, have spread apart. Okay, and we can see that. We then charge a glass rod with silk. Well, glass is, let me see if I can highlight it. Glass is right here, and so that's going to become positively charged. It's going to lose its electrons, and silk will be down the bottom. It will become negatively charged. I don't think I have silk on this one, but it will be down the bottom somewhere. So the glass rod is now positively charged, and it's going to be moving towards the... Um, the electroscope. Remember, the electroscope was negatively charged, so there would be a net negative charge in this electroscope. And now, the positive is being brought towards. Well, I'm going to represent the, because I'm going to say the positives don't really move. I'm going to keep these fairly fixed within the electroscope, and because it was touched by the uh, ebonite, which was negatively charged, this electroscope currently has a net negative charge. So the charge on this electroscope, the net negative charge, is, is a negative one. It's got a net negative charge. There are more electrons than protons in the entire system of the electroscope. Now, what's cool about this is that the glass rod moves near to, but does not touch, the electroscope. 
So why, how can we explain that these legs, these leaves, are going to move back towards the middle? Well, hopefully you can see by bringing the by bringing the positive charge towards the top of the electroscope, that's going to pull these negatives up. And so, whereas when it was charged with the ebonite, we had lots and lots of negatives in here. It was overly full of negatives because it had this net negative charge. Now what we're doing is we're pulling those negatives up the electroscope and the legs or the leaves of the electroscope have become more neutrally charged. So again, I've got to think about this as an induced charge. This region here, as a result of the positive being introduced at the top, this region here will become more neutral. Or you could say less, less negative. Okay. Okay, in this example, we've got our styrofoam plate with a little LED attached to it. Sorry, the styrofoam plate's on the bottom. There's a metal plate. And we, in class, we use little um, pie trays to do this. So we have a little pie tray, and oh, this, this is the pie tray here, the metal plate. And then this uh, insulated rubber handle on top. So we're able to hold the metal plate without conducting charge away from the metal plate. Underneath, we have the styrofoam plate. So what we do is we charge the styrofoam plate make sure it's negatively charged. So we're going to rub it with fur. Um, then we're going to move this metal plate with an LED attached to it near to the top of the styrofoam plate. So it says, first the metal plate is brought close to the styrofoam plate. While it is near, the wire is touched and the LED flashes briefly. So we need to try and explain that. So let's just draw a slightly enlarged version of this. Okay, so the plate at the bottom, I'll just label this. This is the styrofoam plate. And this has been given a negative charge by rubbing with fur. So this has a negative net charge. It's negative. Okay, as we bring the metal plate, remember this handle, we were able to hold the handle because this is an insulator. It's only the metal bit that is um, that is conductive, so this is metal. Okay, as we bring, it's neutrally charged, but as we bring it close to the plate, the positives, let's put them evenly spread around, they don't move, but the negatives, which would have been evenly spread around, these are now being pushed away. They do not want to be near to the styrofoam plate. And if they could get away further, they would. And there's the hint. Now we have, a, we've have we have a little LED attached to the edge of it. The electrons, they're going to really want to get away. And they can't until you touch it. So when you touch the end, if you're able to connect the this end to your finger, which I'm going to call a ground, as soon as you ground this, these electrons can now move through the LED and the little LED will flash. Just very briefly, because once those electrons have gone, that's it, you're done. You've discharged them. There's no more excess charge. So you'll just get this very brief flash from the LED. Okay, so the final step here is that we actually now move the plate even further away and we touch the LED once more. So I'm going to remove the styrofoam plate away, and that's going to represent... Um, the this this metal plate being moved up, and I've exaggerated what's happening happened here. I've said that all of these negatives have disappeared; they've all been discharged. That, of course, wouldn't be true. There would still be some in there, but just to make it a little bit clearer for us, I've gone ahead and done that. So I'm going to remove the styrofoam plate away completely. That represents this plate being moved up, and then we'll think about what happens at that point. Okay, so here it goes. The metal plate, the negatively charged metal plate is now gone. And think about what's happening. We've now got this positive charged metal plate and the LED is sat here. The, if there was any way electrons could get back into the metal plate, they would. And of course, what I'm going to do now is ground it once more, this time with the plate uh, away from the styrofoam plate. <clears throat> 
So as I touch this LED now, so this is going to be my ground on my finger, now the electrons are able to go back into the plate. The electrons are going to go back this way, they're going to rejoin the positive charge that's within the metal plate, and once again you're going to get, oops, that should be green, because we have a green LED, once again the light will flash briefly as these electrons move through the LED.